Another lesson is to be careful about baselining or fixing science requirements too soon. The key is to be flexible. Uh, the development cycle for human spaceflight hardware can be so long that you're locked into old technologies. Laboratory technologies are changing really rapidly. Computer technologies are changing really rapidly. Everything needs to be upgradable. Uh, we baseline some um, really extreme science requirements for things that wound up not being very useful to our users. Uh, for example, we had all kinds of custom rack interface software that users had to interface with. It used Department of Defense uh, data transmission standards, which are obscure to the rest of the community. And then later we had to go in and upgrade those to support higher data rates, to support normal TCP IP network communications that everybody's familiar with. And so there's no reason to spend a lot of money locking those things down early on. Uh, if you stay flexible, you can save some money in development and then be current in your technology when you actually implement the research. Another thing we've learned is that uh, you can use a lot more commercial off-the-shelf hardware than we thought you could back from the shuttle days. So uh, just recently, as an example, there was a, a tomography device. This is to take measurements of the shape of the eye in the astronauts. And we had a choice between um, building a pretty expensive customized piece of equipment or taking a commercial off-the-shelf piece, which we thought might not work in space, might overheat, might have some problems. Uh, our, the program manager made the call, let's go ahead and fly the COTS version and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then we'll spend the money on the expensive one. We flew it into orbit and it seems to be working. So there are, um, there are real important ways to use COTS hardware, both to save costs, but also then it makes the laboratory look exactly what, like what the investigators used to using on the ground. And that helps them translate and compare their research in space to what they're doing in their laboratory. So it actually makes it easier for them to use the facilities as well. Over the decades that it takes to do a human spaceflight mission, all facilities are going to need upgrades regardless of the kind of science. Communication technologies, uh, imaging technologies, data technologies, all those, those things will change. And so you really enhance the mission and enhance the science that you can do by making sure that the ability to do those upgrades is built in from the beginning.